All right, we got the second half of the Arizona Cardinals game. Buccaneers at Arizona. The thriller in Arizona. This is a long one. It's not a lot of Jimmys and Joes like I normally do because, quite frankly, there wasn't a lot of Jimmys and Joes action in this. Uh, we get to see more of J.J. Watt beat people up. We also get to see uh, a couple times they got the better of J.J. Watt, believe it or not. But I just went ahead and put in here everything that I found interesting. Not a whole lot I left on the cutting room floor. I did leave some uncalled penalties and missed tackles, stuff like that. But this is just things I found interesting while watching the All-22 Coaches film. There's a lot in here, so let's get to it. 13-16 in the third quarter, and again... You've got Tompkins letting the ball bounce. This is driving me crazy. I don't know if I can handle this anymore. Look, right, right here. It bounces right here. He had plenty of time to come up and get that ball. And he could have run. I mean, the, the defenders are 10 yards away. But instead, what happens is he lets it bounce, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes. And they down it at the nine. That's ridiculous. He's got to stop doing that. 13.05 in the third quarter. This is one of the many reasons why our run game struggles so much. All right. Rashad White gets the ball. He goes. we got really good blocking here. But look, you can see he's got one guy free. One guy. Now, in order to have a good run, you're always going to have to beat one guy. So you would think. You know, he would try to come out here, shake this guy, you know, and get past him. And he's got he got all the room in the world down here. But instead, let's look at what he does. Okay, here it is from the end zone angle. You can see uh, 14 gets a good block here. Uh, 88 down blocks well. Uh, 73 gets to the second level. You got everybody blocked up. This is a great block right here. And you can see Devin or Rashad White has got a decision here. You can try to squeeze through this hole or bounce to the outside. And all you got to do is beat this man. And even if you don't beat him, you're going to get good yardage. But what he does is he tries to squeeze in right here. He goes right into the pile and gets tackled. And he picks up four yards. It's not bad. But it's one of the reasons why our running backs just aren't making good decisions. 11.49 in the third quarter. This is third and two. Now, again, this is another reason why our offense just is not working. We do not do in the vertical passes as much. We're not even running the routes as much, but we're, we're definitely not attempting the no risk it, no biscuit. Look at this. Here's what we'd end up doing. We uh, Brady throws it to uh, Godwin out here. It's a bad pass. Uh, Brady's worried about this guy undercutting. And so he kind of throws it high. Godwin can't get to it. But look what he missed. And this has happened so much with Brady this year. Watch Evans. Evans comes out, puts a great move on 20. Boom. And you see right there, Evans puts his hand up. And I've been saying this for years. Anytime Evans puts his hand up, he's mailboxing. Then you chunk it to him. Look at this separation he gets. You know, and Brady's got a clean pocket, but instead it ends up being an incomplete pass. And three and out. 10.58 in the third quarter. It's first and 19 from the Arizona nine. Everybody talks about the Buccaneers blitz 30% of the time. That's what they say. But I disagree with that. I don't think we do. Uh, we do a lot of exotic movements and formations and all that good stuff. To me, a blitz is when you rush more than or when you rush more than four. But here's no, here's what we do, and I think people are considering this a blitz. What happens? Uh, Edwards comes in. He he rushes, gets picked up by Connor. Ninety eight Nelson. He drops back into coverage. Now he first acts like he's going to come up and rush, but then he he goes back. So we end up with rushing four. Right here. And I think a lot of people would write this down in the stats as a blitz, and it's not. But what is this is funny. Uh look at look at Nacho with his his ballet jump. We did do did do, do, do. <laughs> that's funny. Anyhow, Edwards comes over, uh, 
and McSorley feels phantom pressure. I mean, he, he right there he starts to scramble. And look how far away Edwards is. I mean, he had a he had a very very clean pocket. Had plenty of time to stand back there, but he ends up throwing it to Connor right here, who's open, and it lands right in his hands, and he drops it. Just kind of ugly football. Third quarter, 439. This is first and 10 from the Arizona 35. And again, the more complex the system is, the easier it is to break. You've got Leverett. He pulls. It goes this way. This is a run. It's designed to go to the uh, right. Uh, Coquive comes. Da -da -da, uh, 78 goes to second level and blocks. Uh, 41 and 60 are supposed to pick up 97. And anybody that comes off the edge... Blah, blah, blah. What ends up happening is 60, he starts to pull, ends up tripping over 70's feet right here. You can see he trips. He falls into 69, knocking 69 off his block of 95. And you see worse as he's going to the second level to block 25. Coquif is coming. He's going to try to get 97. Coquif ends up getting <laughs> runs into 69 or uh, 60, 69's laying on the ground. So as you can see, I mean, there's two free guys coming. There's no way uh, Lenny could have done anything, especially considering how he was supposed to go this way. But he tries to go up the middle, uh, ends up getting a yard. But then this is the same play. This <laughs> Notice this again. We've got Otten blocking J.J. Watt again. Uh, this is just this is just ridiculous. <laughs> of course, no damage is done here this time, but I have a feeling this is not going to work out well. Three fifty-eight in the third quarter. This is second and nine. Very next play, and JJ Watt ninety-nine ends up beating a double team by sixty and seventy-three. He's just been doing this all day. This guy's amazing. And he's done it to everybody down the line. He's done it to Worth. He's done it to Mason. He's done it to Hainsey. He's done it to Wharton. He did it to Wells before. He's done it to Leverett. But he just knifes his way through, does a swim move on 60 right there, knifes his way through, gets great leverage, and really nothing 73 can do there, and uh, ends up getting the tackle for a loss. And he's just he's just dominated this game. 3.15 in the third quarter. It's third and 11. This is an interception Tom Brady throws on the out route to Mike Evans. Now, this is a route and a throw that the Buccaneers have done forever. It's kind of a staple. Most teams do this if you've got a pretty good quarterback. You can see he throws it. Guy jumps up, catches the ball. Good interception. And that's really what this was. It wasn't a bad decision by Brady. It wasn't a bad route by Evans. It was really just bad luck or good, good play by the defender. You can see Evans goes out. Brady's looking at it the whole time. Now, he could have thrown it right here. And that might would have been better. But Brady sees that the defender's got his back turned. And that's what you want. You want the defender to have his back to the ball. So Brady winds up and he throws it. And as soon as he releases it, look what happens. The defender turns his head. It's just bad timing on Brady's part. Bad luck, really. So the defender's able to turn around, get an eye on the ball, adjust his route, and jump up and catch the ball. I mean, he this was, this was a good decision by Brady's part. Defender had his back to the quarterback, and he just, as soon as he threw it, I mean, as soon as he released it, right there, you can see the defender's turning in his head. And it's too late. Brady's already got the ball out of his hand right there. Defender turns his head right there. Boom. He could see the ball. Boop. So that was just a great play by the Cardinals cornerback. 308 in the third quarter. Now, I've been complaining a bit this year about Hicks. It's kind of been a non-factor at Keem Hicks here. You know, just compared to Nava Kong Su, he's, he's not, he can't even hold a light to him. But this is almost a duplicate of Nava Kong Su play. Now, here you go. You get the handoff to Connor. He sees this, and look at that hole. That is all day long. I mean, you're going to take this one to some seriously good plus yardage. But if you can see, Hicks 
has got his man stood up at arm's length. He's controlling the block. And as soon as Connor makes his decision, boom, he sheds the block, comes out, and makes the tackle. That was a really good play by Hicks. That's This is what Damakong Su is a master at. Three seconds in the third quarter. It's second and eight from the Arizona 33. Uh, Missouri ends up throwing a 43-yard bomb to, to number two out here. And... This is really, I mean, I mean, it's really good coverage. I mean, 32 comes over, and you can see it on the broadcast. But you can see it here pretty decently. Uh, 32 Edwards, he gets his hand up in there. I mean, he's got his hand in between the receiver's arms and actually gets his hand on the ball there. But it was just a great catch, great throw, great catch. Everybody did well on here. Now, the one complaint I do have is we got zero pressure. Zero pressure. I mean, we rush four, but I mean, look at this. There's nobody within five yards of the quarterback, and it stays this way. I mean, look at this. He he has all the time in the world. There's nobody even close. We'll be able to see why that was looking at the end zone angle. Right here, you can see uh, Levante David comes in. You got Hicks. I'm not sure who that is, and you've got Tryon. They're all coming in, but watch what happens. See how 76 grabs Levante David like that, and he's able to control him. He's able to yank him around and everything. That is not holding. Now, in years past, that could have been considered holding, but not anymore. They do not consider this holding. Same thing happens here. Hicks gets grabbed by 73. You can see it, and he's just got control of him. He can't go anywhere. Uh, Baltimore and San Francisco and Kansas City, all three did this very well against the Buccaneers. And I, you know, we just haven't learned how to get out of it. And you see Hicks reaches up and he grabs the center's wrist and he's trying to get loose, but he can't. Uh, so, you know, that nullified two of our guys. And then it was this 92 Galston, you know, he's getting triple T and nothing he can do over there. Uh, and then, Tryon got double teamed, 85 blocks him, and then 68 blocks him. So, you know, it was just good blocking. It was a good play by the Arizona Cardinals. Buccaneers did pretty decent on this, too. The coverage was good. Uh, it was just, you know, one of those things where everybody did everything right, and Cardinals came out on top. Two seconds left in the third quarter. This is the very next play. It's first and 10. Direct snap to Connor. He tries to run it. The fake pitch to two. But uh, he ends up getting tackled by Devin White. This is a nice – I'd love to see this with Devin White. Now, normally he's not that good at shedding blocks, but you'll see 68 comes out, tries to block Devin White, and White tosses him. Able to get in and get the, the tackle there. Uh, nine comes around trying, and he would have got it if uh, 75 didn't – Grab him right here and yank him. But also, look at the 54. This is where 54 is just so elite. David is so good at block shedding, block avoidance. I mean, 89 comes in, it's got a great block on him, then boom, 54 just sheds him. <laughs> and ready for the block. Also, look at 92. You haven't seen a whole lot of this during this game. Uh, 75 comes up, hits 92, boom. Uh, 92 don't take too kindly to this, and he throws 75 to the ground and stands over him. Also, in the background, you can see 98 Hicks and 76 getting into it. Like I said, they're, they're shoving each other and talking crap. Uh, now, Hicks is a street fighter. He, he, he loves to do stuff like this. But like I said, it, it hasn't been a whole lot during this game. There they go, the back and forth. <laughs> 98 gets a little... Back shove in there. I like that. They get up in each other's face here. 13-24 in the fourth quarter. Second and eight from Tampa Bay 19. Keyshawn Vaughn. We got a Keyshawn Vaughn spotting here. He gets the ball, runs six yards. We run away from 99 J.J. Watt. That's good. But watch what happens here. 78 has just been getting whooped by J.J. Watt all day. Uh... The previous play, he had done this exact same thing where he had just gone down the line, controlling the block, and made the tackle. But right here, worse, grabs him. 
by the front of the shoulder pads and just yanks him. Look, yanks him away, way over here. Watts just kind of walking away. I will see if this, if if Watt gets revenge for this one. Let's watch it in real time, and you can see it's kind of a violent yank. Here. <laughs> Now, it's good blocking by the Buccaneers on this play, but unfortunately, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn slips and falls down when he goes to make his cut right here. He sees, ooh, I got plenty of room right here. So he tries to make a cut and slips and falls down. Uh, he does end up getting back up right before he gets touched, picks up some decent yardage. 12.43 in the fourth quarter. This is third and two. This is an extremely bad decision by Tom Brady. Uh, we got third and two, and you can see almost everybody goes to the sticks, a little bit past, but he throws it to Mike Evans. And you can see 25 is watching this the whole time. Right here, Tom Brady's wound up. 25 is going to undercut him. I don't know what Brady was thinking. If 25 didn't have feet for hands, this would have been an interception and a pick six all day long. I do not know what Brady was thinking here. This is just poor, poor decision-making. Now, the Cardinals only rushed three. He's not being pressured. You can see, you know, Walton over here struggling a little bit, gets his feet crossed up. But if Brady would have just waited one second and looked this way, he had 14. I just... Don't know what's going on with Brady this year. He's made many more bad decisions than he has in times past. I think he's got a lot on his mind. Twelve thirty-nine in the fourth quarter. This is a punt by Camarda, which does not turn out very well. It's a short punt to begin with. Bad on Camarda. But then you see 10, Scotty Miller. He comes down and he runs into the return guy. Right there, before the ball gets there. He's hitting him before the ball gets there. Don't know how this wasn't a penalty. We all saw it on the broadcast. I uh, wish we'd get an explanation on that. Uh, then you've got the returner. He goes to the outside, does a good job, and then jumps over Camarda. Woo! And luckily for us, 25 is hustling to get down there and make the tackle. The thing I want to point out, here's our girl Jafar. She's just been standing down here at the far end of the benches this whole game. This is very strange. Now, normally she's up in the mix. I don't know if she's been relegated to the borderlands. But, I mean, normally she's right up in the mix with the coaches and the players and everything. But this whole game, she's been standing right here. Don't know what's going on with that. 10.59 in the fourth quarter. This is first and 10 from the Tampa Bay 22. And the Arizona Cardinals are always doing sneaky stuff, man. I mean, they, they are just a sneaky team. Uh, you see, they're in the jumbo set. You've got the big boys over here, big boys over here. They're definitely showing run. You see, McSorley, he will signal for motion here. But 88 just comes over slightly and gets in between these two guys. Okay. That's just show. See, he just scooches over a little bit. Now that's everybody saying, ah, you're going to run it over here or you're going to run it behind these guys. What they do is they fake, and you see that tight end squeezes between these two guys and goes out. And then McSorley does a fake handoff, boots to the right, and he's expecting this guy to be wide open. But, like I said, Buccaneers are pretty smart defense. <laughs> They've got everybody bracketed. I mean, there is nowhere for him to go. So he just ends up having to throw it away. 10.53 in the fourth quarter. James Conner gets a touchdown for 22 yards. Run it to the left side. Let's see what we can see here. Well, you got one missed tackle there. And then three guys don't even attempt to tackle. What happened here? Looks like 26, Logan Ryan takes a bad angle. Of course, to start off with, 98, Nelson misses the tackle right there 
we'll have to look at it from the end zone angle and see if how much distance there is. He might not have been able to get to it. Uh, 32, it looks like there might have been a little holding there. 23, he's doing a little bit of containment. He could have he could have gone this way to squeeze that hole a little bit more. But the 26, look, he starts off on the five-yard line. He takes an angle like this and then comes back. <laughs> Not quite that drastic. Well, no, it is pretty drastic. He comes down all the way to the 10 and then cuts back. Big big bevel and then ends up not getting the tack a little bit of a little bit of a stiff arm there. 31 comes across from the other side of the field. But he slows down right here because he figures 26 is gonna get him. Nope. Just a bad, bad read from everybody. Let's see what kind of space 98 gets. He gets off his block right there. Yeah, he could have made that tackle. He should have made that tackle. Going for the shoestring there. Goodness. Take a, take an extra step there, buddy. And yeah, you can see a little bit of holding here. Not bad. Not bad. Wouldn't, wouldn't complain about that. Really, it's this the missed tackle and the bad angle that allows this to happen. And I would have liked to see an SMB pinch in more. Ten forty one in the fourth quarter, the second and ten from the Tampa Bay thirty three. This is a screen pass to Leonard Fournette, who runs it for forty four yards. It's a nice little run by Fournette. This, this is a big play for the in the game. I think it was probably the biggest play in the game. Let's look back and see what happens. It all starts off with these three blockers. Uh, Fourteen, Godwin. He, he gets beat by his blocker. His blocker just passes him to the side. And he's got a bead on uh, Fournette. 25's got a bead on Fournette, too. And then, uh, it was this three, he comes in, and he's got a bead on Fournette as well. But what happens is 88 reaches out, and he grabs hold of 33. Now, he doesn't hold him. He just sticks his arm out. And he causes his three to get in the way of uh, eight or nine, and 25 goes to make the tackle, and he ends up running into nine, who is in turn run into three. So it ends up being a big pile of Cardinals here. They kind of all knock each other off. It looks like the monster from the thing where it's just one big blob of limbs. And then uh, Fournette's off to the races. Boom. But we talked about Gage earlier with this blocking. He does it again. He does a good block here right in front of the head coach. Here's Bowles. He's watching the whole thing. And 17, Gage takes his man down on the sideline. And it looks like he actually turns and looks at Bowles like, is that a good job there, coach? So anyhow, that's how this all happened. Let's look at it from the end zone angle, see what we can see. Here we go. Boom. Now, if you see 88, he does not grab this guy. He just sticks his hand on him. It. It's kind of like how they do in the uh, kickoffs or the field goals. They just stick an arm out and just slow him down. And as you can see, <laughs> these three just end up knocking each other off. Oh, what a mess. And then 17, driving his guy into the dirt. Look at Leverett. Boy, he's got, he's got energy. For an offensive lineman. 10 1 in the fourth quarter this is the very next play. And we try the same thing pretty much, except for we go to the right side. Fournette gets screen pass. You've got Godwin and Evans out here blocking. Unfortunately, Evans is not able to get on his guy. Gives him a little bit of a push there. Uh, same thing happens with Godwin, and this is the same guy. It's nine. He just tosses Godwin to the side. Boom. And he comes in and makes a tackle. One of the things that's almost similar, though, is these two guys run into each other and almost knock themselves off the tackle. Look at this. Whoa. Luckily, this time, Nine was there to get it. And I think uh, this dude got a piece of his ankle. Yeah. He's got him by the ankle right here. 
417 in the fourth quarter. This is third and six from the Tampa Bay. 49, there's a 12-yard pass and catch to Chris Godwin over the middle. It's a real quick slant-like move. The strange thing about it is, is look, look at this Arizona guy and this Arizona guy. This is 25. This is, I think, the third time I've seen him do this where he just falls down for no reason. Uh, this guy, he just slips. That's number nine. Falls. You know, I mean, they probably wouldn't have stopped the catch, but uh, 25 could have hit Godwin when he caught, most likely jarring the ball loose. You know, at least at least tried, but it's hard, it's hard to play football when you're on your knees. We're at second and 10 from the Arizona 26. Uh, now, Brady, I, you know, so you, you start this off. Arizona doesn't do a lot of... Uh, disguising their looks, you know they're they're playing cover two, uh, so you got uh, you know the middle field open. We end up running two routes, uh, Mike Evans and K. Dotton both go to the middle. What Brady ends up doing is throwing a dump off pass to twenty nine, and you can see right here he adjusts his platform. Brady Brady hardly ever throws off platform, so he adjusted platform right there. You know, the way his feet are angled and his shoulders are pointed, he's throwing over here. He never, he, he kind of glances right there. He kind of glances in this direction. But he has all intents and purposes of throwing it to him basically from the get-go, which is a shame because if he would have, as soon as he looks right here, you see he glances over in that direction real briefly. Uh, he would have seen, look at this. I mean, that most likely would have been a touchdown. It definitely would have been a big game. And you can see, Evans has got his arms out like, dude, come on, I am wide open. And even even so, Otten would have been a better better option. But uh, Brady was going to throw it to 29 no matter what, you know, just, just based on his platform. You know, he never, he never adjusted to throw it downfield. And immediately... You know, when he set his feet going backwards, he hops, and then right there, you know, that is him saying, I'm throwing it in this direction. We had downfield looks, but he just not he's not taking them. And here it is from the end zone angle. I mean, you can see he's got great protection. He's got all the time in the world. It's third and eight on Arizona twenty-four. Now this is this is the play after I was just talking about Brady did you know it's not taking the deep shots while he does here. But here, you know, you got three guys in the back, middle field is closed. You know, you, you, you don't want to go anywhere in here. And what's he do? Uh, you know, Godwin runs a seam route and Brady throws it to him. Now Brady's looking over here. You know, he pulls the safety over in that direction, but then as soon as Brady looks back this way. The safety comes back into this direction, and then Brady throws. This was not a good decision. I mean, you've got this is basically a jump ball, and that's what it turns into. And it could have been an interception. It just wasn't a very, very good decision, especially when you had seventeen down here with a stop. Boom, you know, you throw it, you know. Brady's in a throwing motion right now. He could have just as well been throwing it to this guy. That would have been a first down. You can see from the end zone angle, much better the safety watching the eyes of Brady. See, he, was going, he started going in that direction because Brady was looking over there. But then when Brady looks over this direction, the safety turns and goes that away. Now he's in great position. I do not. I don't know why Brady threw the ball right here. You know, like, eh, no. And again, you know, he's got great protection. You know, I just noticed this. I don't know a whole lot about Arizona Stadium, but this is all open right here. It seems like an awful waste. I know a lot of people that love to sit in the end zone section. And this is all, there's no seats there. It seems like a waste. 
I don't know what they do. Is this so that they can uh, remove all these very easily and this is open to, to bring, bring large truckloads of stuff in? I don't know. I mean, you can see it's all open back here. It's all flat. It looks like for loading and unloading stuff. And that seems like an awful lot of empty, wasted space for seating. And like I said, man, a lot of people love to sit in the end zone section. Huh. Don't know. Just notice that. 103 in the fourth quarter. This is third and three. We get Leonard Fournette go up the middle for one yard. Uh, it's pretty interesting stuff going on here. It's, it's a very simple run. 60 Leverett does a good job on 99. Watt actually gets him and throws him to the ground. Gets him turned sideways. Tosses him to the ground. Boom. And then stands over him. <laughs> I like that. He's like, what? He does offer offer his hand, though, to, to help him up. Uh, the big problem, the problem with this was uh, 73 gets beat by 97. And 70 gets beat by 25. So 73 gets beat right there. Boom. This guy comes in and makes a tackle. And then. 70 gets tossed to the side by 25 Collins, and Fournette really has nowhere to go. But uh, Leverett did a good job on Watt there, finally. Seven oh four in overtime. This is first and 10 from the Tampa Bay 24. This is a beautiful play. Been set up by the, all the screen passes we've done. If you look, we fake a screen play. Brady. Pump fakes like he's going to throw it to Fournette. These three guys act like they're blocking. And then as soon as they commit, then 17 shoots around and Brady just throws it to Gage. Beautiful, beautiful play. 609 in overtime to the second of four, Arizona 47. Another beautiful play by Evans and Brady. This is an out route to Evans. You see the ball's already in the air. He, he threw it before the turn was even made. Throws it to where only Evans can catch it. I mean, you know, it's pretty decent coverage by 34, but not a lot you can do there. Catches it. Goes out of bounds. But what I love is everybody's reaction over here. Uh, here here's Jamar. Jamar. Uh, nine try on watch him. He comes, he comes running up. So like, yes, they're all clapping and applauding. Even the big boys sitting on the side. There's Nacho, but they give him like a, 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 a sending off. Look at this. Everybody's here. <laughs> uh, Jamar, she's she's hollering. I love her. Look at, look at Tryon's face. Look at Nacho. They are in it. All right, well, that wraps it up. That's about everything I found interesting watching the All-22. A couple of things. Tompkins has got to stop letting that ball bounce. Brady's decision-making has really gotten off whack this year. I think this game highlighted it a lot. I thought the protection was pretty good. Some of the running back decisions could have been a little bit better. But all in all, it is what it is. Buccaneers walked away with a victory. And hopefully with the All-22, you can see why. So until next time, go Bucks.